Yeah, I come to show my, my family, actually the culture. Our forefathers used to look like and how they used to live. They were, they were wiped out, actually they were wiped out. The hunter-gatherer and pastoralist communities didn't have armies. And because the black farming communities had trained armies, they were the superior power in the land at the time. In 1850, there was a census in South Africa and there were still 100,000 San, a registered Bushmen or San in South Africa. 100 years later, in 1950, there were known to be 30 or 40 inside the Kalahari Park. So something had happened, they had all disappeared. And people going to school learnt about the Bushmen. I learnt about the Bushmen as a, as a group that had died out in South Africa. I'm Roger Channels. I'm the lawyer for the San, uh, the Komani San. And I've been involved with them for about uh, seven years. I met the old man, Rechofstein Kraper, uh, in about 1992. And he was living down at a place called Kahakama in the Cape, where he was carrying out some tourism operation together with a farmer there. And there was something of an oddity there, the, the, the last remaining Bushman. No one knew of any other Bushman in South Africa at the time. Shortly after meeting them, I knew that they wanted one thing, and that was to return to the Kalahari. Rechopstein Kraper had a vision that his people would get their land back, which was very unusual, I think, because Bushmen for the year, for over the years had lost everything. This old man um, died five years ago, and David Kraper is his son, not his oldest son, but he was the son who was anointed with the leadership of the clan, and is generally accepted as being the sand leader. They were Bushmen everywhere, from the Drakensberg to the Cape and further in from the Cape, everywhere. In the Karoo and the Cedarberg, you can climb as high as you like and you will find traces of the Bushmen there. He was there. The rock paintings show it. We were driven from the south into the north, but I was not afraid to go back. I went to Parliament and demanded, not if you please, sir. I demanded to know what had come of the land that belonged to the Bushmen, as proved by the rock paintings. Rechopstein Kraper and his extended family lived in the park in the 1920s. In 1931, the Kalahari Gensburg National Park was formed, not to save the Gensburg, but really to preserve the way of life of the San who were known to be living there. But game reserve legislation doesn't protect people. And in a very, very short time, a clash started developing between rangers who were focused on saving animals and the people living inside the park who were now restricted and the, the start of the eviction of the sand began. I was born in the park. I love the park. I gained my skills there. I did courses there, not like in school. If a man wants to learn, he should come to me. I will give him knowledge of tracking. I learned everything in the park. I love the park so much, I can say, it is my park. We lost the freedoms we had before, when we were caught up in the law which said the animals must be protected. That's when we lost our hunting rights. They also said, the Bushmen hunt too much, they are lazy and dirty and their dogs must be shot. And word got out that we were making trouble for the park and they decided to make a plan. And the plan was the park was only for Westerners. We must leave and find work. 